One of the most specced out smartphones we have ever seen has arrived at our studio. This is the Nubia Red Magic 3, which aims to be the best gaming smartphone ever. Just to give you a taste of some of the specs, this phone features the Qualcomm 855 CPU with up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery and large AMOLED display among many other features. But the phone doesn't just stand out in the specs department, the build is incredibly unique too. We'll see on the back, we have the Red Magic logo embossed on the rear with some red markers. Everything from the rear facing camera sensor to the rear mounted fingerprint scanner is custom cut to fit with that sharp angular look that this phone is going for. That narrow strip in the middle of the phone is actually an RGB light panel that's completely customizable. So in the settings, you can select the LED effects and decide when to activate the strip. Do you want a light show when you're playing music or video? Do you just wanna have it light up when you get an incoming call or a notification? You can select all of that in the settings. I think it's pretty neat and it's one of those features that's not really functional, but man, is it cool and it's very unique. I think it gives this phone character in a sea of smartphones that more or less almost look identical to each other. You'll also notice some vents around the phone and that's because this phone has an internal fan to help keep this phone cool when you're gaming for long periods of time. It's actually the first gaming phone with a built-in fan. There's also these shoulder triggers on the side of the phone to be used for gaming. They look like side mounted fingerprint scanners, but they're not. The fingerprint scanner is on the rear of the phone. To use these triggers, you have to switch on Red Magic Game Zone by sliding the physical red slider that's on the left side of the phone up. So you just slide that little slider up and you'll see this mode will kick in. This is yet another unique hardware related feature on this phone. And uh, when you activate that game zone, it's just a matter of selecting a game and configuring your controls for the triggers to work. Now, I'm not done talking about the build hardware. There's also a seven pin connector on the left side of the phone to connect some accessories like a docking station that's sold separately. There's a headphone jack up top and dual front facing stereo speakers on the front of the phone with nice big speaker grills that are pretty slim and uh, don't result in very thick bezels. The display is actually very similar to the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's an AMOLED panel measuring in at 6.65 inches with a 1080 by 2340 resolution and a 90 Hertz refresh rate. So content will look noticeably smoother and more lifelike than almost any other smartphone since most smartphone displays have a 60 Hertz refresh rate. The only phone that I know of that has a, an even higher rate is the Razer phone with its 120 Hertz refresh rate. But 90 Hertz is appreciated and uh, it will be noticeably better than most smartphone displays. Also, I think some people will actually like how this phone doesn't have any curved edges like the OnePlus 7 Pro. So it should be easier to hold in the hand when gaming. The real star of the show in the software department is this Red Magic Gaming Zone, which lets you scroll through all of your games and configure various settings from here, you can turn on or off the cooling fan, which isn't too loud, but it can be heard in a quiet room. You can also block messages so you won't be interrupted while gaming, and you can turn on or off the RGB light strip. Swiping in from the right, you have more settings to mess around with, like a 4D haptic feedback system that only works with some games like PUBG, Asphalt 9, and Knives Out. But what it does is it's supposed to match the action more closely and deliver vibrations and feedback and whatnot that will improve the gaming experience. So I think at this point, if you're a mobile gamer, you should really be in love with this phone. Uh, it's worth also mentioning that this phone features the latest and greatest Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset with up to 12 gigabytes of RAM in the maxed out variant. So there's plenty of power to handle the most demanding games. But if you're not a big gamer, I think there's still a lot of things to appreciate here. The software is Android Pie with a fairly light skin on top that I don't really like aesthetically, but uh, it's super easy to change in the settings or with a third party launcher. There's very little bloatware and the menus, they do resemble stock Android. My only concern is just longevity and how often it'll receive updates from Red Magic. There is a 48 megapixel rear facing camera, which should perform similarly to the 7 Pro's main 48 megapixel camera sensor, 
but there's no additional rear-facing sensors to enable features like portrait mode or to capture those ultra-wide angle photos. The camera app, as a result, is really simple and pretty minimal. There's not really much going on. You have a pro mode and some basic video and photo modes. I will say though, what is kind of cool is that this phone can record 8K video uh, that I'm gonna have to test out more to see how it performs, but that's a first and that's super cool. This is some sample footage straight from the smartphone. There is also a 16 megapixel front-facing camera sensor similar to the OnePlus 7 Pro that too should perform similarly. If there's one area that this phone falls short in is the cameras. I'll have to test them out more to see how the camera quality is over time. But on paper, you know, it's certainly lacking some bells and whistles, but uh, I think it could perform well for most people. Rounding this phone out is a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is one of the biggest batteries we've seen in a smartphone. And it doesn't add much thickness to the phone, which is impressive given the other components packed inside. I believe the depth is about 9.7 millimeters thick, not too bad. Uh, sadly, there's no wireless charging, but there is 27 watt fast charging. So I'm looking forward to putting my SIM card in here and using the Red Magic 3 as my daily driver for a couple of weeks to really get a feel for how it performs. What I will say is if you're a gamer, this phone is a dream come true. It's incredibly powerful, it feels great in the hand, and it should also act as a good phone and not just a good gaming device. It's also not that expensive relative to the competition. It starts at $479 and it works with the GSM carriers here in the United States. But uh, I would say make sure and check your carrier's bands to see how well they are supported with this phone. I'll place a link in the description to check out this phone if you're interested. With that said, I'm Bo HD from PhoneDug.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.